This is the seventh video on trigonometry where we're going to have a look at solving uh, some trigonometric equations that are a little bit more complicated. Um, we saw in the last video how to solve equations where you just had a, the sine in function involved or we just had a cos involved or we just had a tan involved but um, in this video we're going to have a look at where we can have a combination of those. So first example we're going to have a look at is this one. Um, so we need to solve the equation sine x plus 2 cos x equals 0. So straight away I've got a sine and a cos and I'm going to need to try to combine those somehow so I can just get one trigonometric function like we had in the last video. The way I'm going to do that is if I divide through each part of this equation by cos x. So if I'm going to divide the left hand side by cos x, I must divide the right hand side by cos x as well. And the reason why I've decided to do that is because, first of all, it's going to get rid of this cos x here, because the cos x divided by the cos x will just leave me, uh, well, it will leave me with the 2 here. Um, and over there, it's just going to be 0. But most importantly here, it allows me to combine the sine x divided by the cos x, which I know is tan. So, I can now rewrite this equation as tan x plus 2 equals 0. So, tan x must be minus 2. So, now if I do tan inverse, let's get my calculator. minus 63.4 to one decimal place. If I now go, um, I need to find the solutions between 0 and 360. So I'm going to draw my graph. So we're going to need to mark on the asymptotes. So uh, the solution that I've got at the moment, uh, the minus 63.4, that is over here. We're looking here when it's equal to minus 2. So looking across, I will have another solution here and another solution there. Uh, so comparing my points at 0, 180 and 360, if this solution is uh, 63.4 degrees away from 0, it's also going to be 63.4 degrees away from 180. So I'm going to do 180 take away 63.4 which is 116.6 degrees and in a similar way over here I will work out 360 take away 63.4 which is going to give me uh, 296.6 so these are my two solutions to this equation in the range of 0 to 360. Okay, second example. Um, we are solving this equation, so 5 sine x plus, uh, sorry, 5 sine x equals 1 plus 2 cos squared x, and that's in the range of 0 to 360 again. Um, so looking at this equation, 
Again, we've got a sine x and a cos x involved here, so we're going to need to use the identity. I can't use the tan identity here because of this squared. That prevents me from using the tan identity. So, um, in fact, I'm going to use the squared identity. So I know that I can rewrite cos squared. I know that cos squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. I know that those are the same thing. So I can replace this cos squared with 1 minus sine squared. That way it will match up with the sign that I have at the front there. So, I will have 5 sine x is equal to 1 plus 2 lots of the 1 minus sine squared. Let's expand those brackets out now. And now I want to collect up like terms and put everything on one side. So moving the 2 sine squared over to the left hand side, I've got the plus 5 sine x. Uh, the 1 plus the 2 is 3. Moving that 3 to the left hand side will be minus. Okay. Right, we have a quadratic equation now, so we can factorise this, hopefully. Yeah, I think this factorises nicely. So we'll have uh, and we need this is gonna have to be a plus three, and that's gonna have to be a minus one, because that way I'll have a six sine x and a minus sine x, so I will get the plus 5 sine x there. If it didn't factorise nicely, you just have to use the quadratic formula, or you could complete the square. Uh, right, so, either this is 0, so this is going to be 0 when sine x is 1 half. So, um, that's going to be when x is 30 degrees. And I know from my sine graph that 30 degrees here is the same as 150 degrees there. Because if it's 30 degrees from zero, it's going to be 30 degrees from 180. So these are my two solutions from that bracket. Over here, in order for this to equal uh, zero, in order for that to equal zero, sine x would need to equal minus three. Now, if you did try to work that out in your calculator, it would tell you a maths error. Um, and the reason for that, let's just have a look at our sine graph. We know that sine, the biggest it can be is one, the smallest it can be is minus 1. And so the sine function is only ever between 1 and minus 1. It can't ever equal minus 3. So there will be no solutions from this bracket. So that's fine, I don't need to write any solutions there. So my, oh, my two solutions to this trigonometric equation are 30 and 150. Last example I'm going to do in this video is this one. We've got 3 sine x multiplied by tan x is equal to 8. Um, again, and the reason why this is in this video is we've got two trigonometric functions that I'm somehow going to need to combine together so I can solve them. Um, now, tan x I know is sine x over cos x. So instead of writing tan x there, I can write sine x over cos x. Right, so multiplying these things, so multiplying 3 times sine x times sine x will give me 3 sine squared x. 
divided by cos x is equal to 8. Um, I don't like the fact that I've got this cos x on the denominator there. That's making it a little bit complicated. So let's multiply both sides by the cos x. And now, actually, once I've got to this stage here, this is pretty much the same sort of equation as this one, because I've got um, a sine squared, and I've got a cos, uh, and I need to use the squared identity. So I'm going to replace the sine squared here, I'm going to replace that with a 1 minus cos squared. I'm going to expand the brackets. And move everything to the uh, right hand side of the equation. So I will end up with moving this to the right hand side will give me a, a plus 3 cos squared. I've got the, oh, sorry about that. I've got the plus 8 cos x um, and moving this plus 3 to the right hand side will give me a minus 3. And now I can factorise this. So it's going to need to be, uh, if I want a plus 8, that's going to have to be a plus 3, and that's going to have to be a minus 1. So that will give me the plus 9 cos x minus 1 cos x will give me the plus 8. So from this bracket, cos x would need to equal one third. So do cos inverse. And that is 70.5 degrees. Check the range. The range is 0 to 360 again. So draw my graph for cos, 70.5 is roughly about there, so this solution is going to be the same looking across here as this solution over here. If it's 70.5 from 0, it's going to be 70.5 from 360 because these are my two equivalent points, so 360 take away 70.5 is going to be 289.5 So these are my two solutions from this bracket the other bracket, cos x would need to be equal minus 3, and for the same reasons as in the previous example, we know cos can never be minus 3, this is only over between 1 and minus 1, so there are no solutions here, which is fine. So that means my only two solutions. Продолжение следует...